This Christmas season, we are partnering with S.A. Heels. Every Christmas, S.A. Heels puts together something they call Affordable Christmas. The goal of Affordable Christmas is to partner with parents to provide toys at a reduced price to the parents. Christmas shouldn't be a time of guilt or shame, especially for children. Providing a marketplace for parents to shop and buy gifts allows all to enter this season with spirits uplifted. As we take this Advent season to prepare our hearts for the coming of the King, one of the things we can do is remove burdens from others so that they can better receive the King this season. To help Affordable Christmas be as successful as possible, please visit the link saheals.com to engage in Advent in a new and exciting way. God bless.
Listen to this portion of the story of God as is written in the library of our hope from the 33rd chapter of Jeremiah. Look, the days are coming when I will fulfill the promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days when the time is right, I will raise up a righteous branch sprouting from the tree stump of David's lineage. This one will do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah will be liberated and Jerusalem will live in safety. And the city will be called by the name of the Messiah. The eternal one is our equity and salvation. This is the story of God told for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we come today because we know you have called us to this time and space, this sanctuary. We've gathered in this place because of what you've already done in our lives, the ways that you have already loved us and shaped us. And we come in response to that, but we also come because we're not done. Our transformation is not yet finished. Our joy is not yet complete. We still suffer. We still fear. We still hope and long to be more loving, more one with you and each other, and to be more free. We know and trust that there is a path to our liberation. We know with you there always has been, there is now, and there always will be. But we need your help. We ask that your spirit will come in ways that we recognize this morning and help us to watch and listen so closely that we can't help but respond. That we might be changed by drawing near to your story, to each other, and to you And not just so that we are transformed, but so that we can help and love others along the journey of transformation. We ask and hope for this with the expectation of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Welcome. Before you sit down, we are going to spend a few moments this morning exchanging the peace of Christ. It's a weird time, so just do it as that feels right. If it's, you know, a bow or a handshake or a hug, whatever feels appropriate. If you're online, send us a text, send us a chat in the Facebook or the Facebook. How old did I just sound right there? In the MySpace. Um, Whatever it is, let us know you're out there. We want to talk to you and we want to spend some time talking to each other. So the peace of Christ be with you. The hope of experiencing liberation in body, mind, and spirit is a central theme in Christianity. It is also a core teaching in many of the world's other great spiritual traditions. The liberation of people is a dominant issue in our divided modern world. In this first week of Advent, the gospel tells us that we hope because our liberation is at hand. The Eternal One lives and breathes and dwells in and among real people, just as we are, warts and all. 
the reality is no different this year. In truth, our understanding of liberation is a work in progress. We must hold our hope for liberation with sensitivity as millions of our sisters and brothers hope for freedom and have not found it. We may even find it difficult to hope through depression or feelings of abandonment ourselves. It is easy to be downcast. Echoing the words of God's story songwriter, Beth Nielsen Chapman, invites us to remember that in the darkest of nights, there's a light. Our voices are joined with all those who have held the hope before us, those who passed it to us as we sing, like the thirst of the seed, we will wait, we believe, it will rain, it will rain in the desert. As we light the first candle, remembering the advent of the Christ and hope he carries, let us remember that we are not alone. We never have been. The rain will come to the desert. There is a light. The freedom and rest of divine will be all in all. The love and light of God are forever at work in us, even in the darkest of night. Please join us in the prayer that will come up in this slide. Gracious and loving God, we thank you in this first week of Advent for breaking again into the world in all of its hopes and pains and complexities. We are grateful for every sign of your liberation, love. And we hope that it brings with us in our world. Amen.
my dear Theo. Is life visible to us in its entirety? Or before we die, do we know of only one hemisphere? Painters, to speak only of them being dead and buried, speak to a following generation or to several following generations through their works. Is that all? Or is there more even? In the life of the painter, death may perhaps not be the most difficult thing. For myself, I declare, I don't know anything about it. But the sight of the stars always makes me dream in as simple a way as the black spots on the map representing towns and villages make me dream. Why, I say to myself, should the spots of light in the firmament be less accessible to us than the black spots on the map of France? Just as we take the train to go to Tarascon, Rouen, we take death to go to a star. What's certainly true in this argument is that while alive, we cannot go to a star anymore then once dead, we'd be able to take the train. So it seems to me not impossible that cholera, the stone, consumption, cancer are celestial means of locomotion, just as steamboats, omnibuses, and the railway are terrestrial ones. To die peacefully of old age, would be to go there on foot. For the moment, I'm going to go to bed because it's late. And I wish you good night and good luck. Handshake. Ever yours, Vincent. On Friday morning of this last week, I was uh, catching up on uh, the news of the week, and I was subjected to Black Friday advertisements. One of the ads that I saw was for a luxury SUV. Uh, it has a family driving in Southern California. You can tell that it's Southern California because there are palm trees, there's a cactus, there's the bright sun, there's even a lizard in the advertisement. But the family is driving in a snowstorm. And so the ad says, put this SUV on your Christmas wish list. Which reminds me of how philosopher Dallas Willard defined hope. Different from a wish, not a wish. Willard said that hope is the confident anticipation of good. It's distinguishable from a wish because a wish is simply unlikely to happen, right? As unlikely as a snowstorm in Southern California. That's not true of hope. Hope involves confidence, the confident anticipation of good. So today we focus on hope as a gift of Christmas. And as people of the Christmas story, we are confident that love wins. Our scripture passage today is from Luke's gospel. But before I read from the gospel of Luke, I want to ask you to pray the Shema with me. Because this is what Jesus would have done every day and especially before the scriptures were read. So would you stand as you are able and let's pray this prayer together. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. The scripture passage from Luke chapter 21, I'm going to begin with verse 25. Jesus said, there will be signs 
in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, the stress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can have a seat. Well, I am confident that you will recognize this painting. This painting is one of the most recognizable and it is one of the most reproduced arts, art, pieces of artwork in our time. It is Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. The original resides in a museum in New York City, the Museum of Modern Art. It was donated by one of the founders of that museum. Starry Night was painted in 1889 when van Gogh spent a year in southern France in an asylum, a small asylum. There were only 41 patients. And it was rather progressive for that particular time. Uh, Therapy was considered to be in music and in art and in gardening. And Van Gogh painted at least 150 different pieces during his year in southern France. Well, I wonder what you see when you look at Van Gogh's Starry Night. Do you see the turmoil in the sky? That activity in the sky takes up most of the canvas, almost three quarters of the space. The swirling of the cosmos and the pulsing light from the moon and the stars. When you look at this piece of artwork, do you see the village? There are houses nestled in the valley, practically embraced by the mountains. There is a church steeple that breaks the horizon formed by the mountains. And the light in the houses almost balances out the light in the sky. Do you see the cypress tree? It's hard to miss. (laughs) It's up front, the close-up view of the cypress tree. The cypress is a symbol of death in the Mediterranean culture. And this is evident to you and to me when we visit a cemetery. There are usually cypress trees in cemeteries even today. All of these things are present in Van Gogh's Starry Night, and I would tell you all these things are present in Luke chapter 21. The passage begins with these words, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the seas and the waves, heaven and earth will pass away. And yet as Luke 21 progresses, There are words of comfort that are nestled into the turmoil. Look to the fig tree, Jesus says, and all the trees. The kingdom of God is near. And then finally, in Luke 21, there is honesty. There is honesty about the upheaval, about the distress and the sorrow that is in the forefront. People will faint from fear and foreboding. The powers will be shaken. Hearts are weighed down with worry. Luke chapter 21 is an apocalyptic text. It's not the only passage of its kind in the Gospels. It's not the only passage of its kind in the Bible. 
There's Daniel and Ezekiel and Revelation and Isaiah and Joel. They all have apocalyptic verses or you can classify the entire book as Revelation because that's what the word apocalyptic means. It means to be revealed or to be uncovered. In this particular kind of literature that is both in and outside of the Bible, a truth is uncovered. A truth that has always been true, but has remained unseen. Rob Bell makes the point that apocalyptic truth is hard won hope. This is hope that is uncovered because there is upheaval. It's hope that is uncovered because there is sorrow. We get to this hope very honestly because we have to survive the struggle to get there. We don't give up. We keep our eyes open. So this hope is not shallow. It's not superficial. It's truth that is revealed during a very tumultuous time. And Rob Bell thinks that together, you and I are in the midst of a period of time of uncovering hopeful truth during this pandemic time. It could be so. It has been rather tumultuous. And I do wonder what are the hopeful truths that I will tell my grandchildren about this time. What will I tell them that I now know that I didn't know a couple of years ago? Will I tell them that the many heroes among us are in the medical field and in the service industry? Will I tell them that I learned that interdependence is really true, it's really a thing, that I learned that I need people, that I need you, and I don't need things so much? Luke 21 has a traumatic setting. You see, it's right before the story of the crucifixion. In fact, Jesus' very last parable is told in these verses that I read. He says, look to the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. In just a few verses, a few short verses, and just five verses, Judas will go to the chief priests, and Judas will talk to the chief priests of betrayal. And it's not too long, maybe just a generation, when the Jerusalem temple will be destroyed by the Romans. Now Luke will write this gospel narrative after the destruction of the temple, 10 to 20 years after. So to me, it's not surprising that the very last thing that Luke tells us before the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection is that there are deep and hopeful truths that can be uncovered, even in times of sorrow, even in times of destruction, maybe especially in times of destruction, and especially in times of sorrow and pain. Well, here's what I think Luke has seen and what Luke expects us to see. Two things, two truths. The first is that good will prevail. Good will win. The Son of Man comes with power and great glory. The epic tale Uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, is an apocalyptic tale. It's an apocalyptic movie, an apocalyptic uh, epic story. You might remember the the movie, uh, The Two Towers, which I think is the second movie. There is a scene between uh, Frodo and Sam uh, that speaks of the tumultuous battle It's where Frodo is really run down after the battle and he's ready to give up. He just says to Sam, I can't go on after this battle. And Sam responds, you know, it's all wrong. We shouldn't be here, but we are. And Sam goes on to say, sometimes, you know, I think of the great stories, the ones that really matter, that are full of darkness and danger, Sometimes you didn't know, you didn't want to know how those stories would end. 
how the world could go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened. But in the end, it was only a passing thing, the shadow. Those are the stories that meant something. They kept going because they were holding on to something. And then Frodo says to Sam, what are we holding on to? And Sam says that there's good in this world and that that good is worth fighting for. When we follow the way of Jesus, we commit ourselves to understanding that love prevails. And that's why we keep at it. That's why we stay in the fight. That's why we love one another. Because we know that in the end, good prevails and love wins. The second deep and hopeful truth of Luke chapter 21 is that life is bigger than me. God is working on a cosmic scale. Preacher Fred Craddock wrote about this text. The human heart is too small a screen on which to cast God's grand scene. What God is up to is so much bigger than am I saved or do you believe? When Paul wrote to the Romans, he wrote these words in chapter 8. The present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation. And then Paul went on to say, if we see what we hope for, it isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. What I really like about what both Paul and Luke have to say about hope, about the uncovering of truth, is that they admit that it's something that we do together. It's a group activity. Luke, building on the image of the woman who is broken, the woman who is hunched over for 18 years for life that Jesus heals earlier in the gospel. Luke writes, when these tumultuous things happen, when they begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads. Plural, heads, not just one, because we're in this together. Henry Nouwen wrote that Christian community is the place of hope. Marriages and friendships and churches are where we trust a spiritual power that is in us when we're together. So hope allows us to live without surrendering to despair. Hope allows us to continue on and we do hope the way that we hope is together. It's a group activity. Well, I suppose that the classic question for apocalyptic literature is when? <laughs> when are these things going to happen? When will this take place? When will we see the Son of Man coming in a cloud? Jesus' words to his listeners are soon. This generation, be alert. What does this mean? It's tripped up greater preachers than myself. <laughs> we are at my house this week, uh, besides celebrating Thanksgiving, we are also watching back-to-back -back episodes of The Office. <laughs> and there's an episode where Pam is installing a new copier, and Kevin impatiently asks Pam, is it ready yet? And Pam says, no, soon. And Kevin then asks, well, when is soon? Soon could be in three minutes. Soon could be in three weeks from now. And Pam says, Kevin, three weeks? Is that soon to you? What is soon? I can't give you a definite answer. But I can tell you that it's been my experience that revelation is always present. Truth is always there to be uncovered. The issue is, am I alert? Are my eyes open enough to see it? Am I in relationship with other people who encourage me to hope? Maybe the divine fingers are always crossed, thinking soon she'll get it. Soon she'll open her eyes. I know it'll happen soon. 
I do wonder, when are these stability shattering things not taking place in my world? Because gosh, it seems like the ground and the skies tremble before me more often than not. So I think we wait. We wait and we hope together. And we trust that God will lead us to a new age, a new understanding, again and again and again. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, we confidently anticipate your goodness to show itself everywhere. Yet there are places in our lives where we cannot see it, where your goodness is hidden from us. And so we are in need of revelation. We are in need of an uncovering soon. Lord, would you come in a way that is clear and is bright, like on a cloud, that we may spot your truth with wonder and awe. This Advent season, reveal to us hope that we do not now see. Amen.
two things that I want you to know about as we, um, gosh, are almost into December. Uh, so these are two things for the start of your December. The first is this Friday night will be our Festival de Navidad at 5 o'clock outside. Uh, there's a petting zoo and activities, live nativity. I hope that you will come. Should be fun for the whole family. And the other thing I want you to know is that starting next week, this worship service will run twice. So we will run for the first time at 945 and then again at 11. We'll get it right for you at 11. <laughs> um, we, as, as we look toward Christmas... We confidently anticipate goodness together. That is hope. It exists. It shows up between us and among us. Would you receive this blessing? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Laughter is the only thing that'll keep you safe In this world that's crying more and more every day Don't let evil get you down In this madness spinning round and round Live forever underneath the sky so blue. Some people say faith, it's a childish game. I play on children. Like it's Christmas Day Sing me a song Sing me a melody Sing out loud Your symphony I want you to live
Go in peace. We miss you. We love you out there online. Have a good week.